Hi, in this video, I'm going to make a, a 3D scan of this mud guard and then I will make a 3D print to see if a 3D scan to 3D printing will work for uh, this part. It has a slot of holes on both sides. I think it's um, more than 2 millimeters thickness. I can print this in my printer. They use the loft tool to create this one. So it's not going to be difficult. It's the really easy part for reversing. Okay, let's uh, clean this up. If you look here, they tap M4 threads into the cast aluminum. Uh, this is a bad design because it can be stripped very easy. Uh, this scanner cannot be used without a mud guard. The dirt will spray directly into the shock absorber and it has no seal. At first, I thought that I would add a plane here so that I can print in this direction. But when I uh, take a closer look at the geometry, if I uh, print in this direction, it would be uh, better because the, the curve profiles will land in this uh, x y direction so it will give a better print quality if i print in this orientation if you uh, look closely it's um this end of the mud card is not flat if the 3d scan comes out uh, like a hundred percent i would need to uh, reverse this one in cat for make a 3d print i would just uh, use the substance modular to add flat base a small one so that it can sit upright on the print bed like this so i changed my mind uh, this uh, object does not require reversing for making a 3d print okay let's start with the 3d scanning i will use a rather pro for making a 3d scan So I made two scan, um, the front and the back. I put some marker on the side wall where it can be seen in both scan. So put the marker for reference when I merge it because uh, this marker will be uh, visible in both scan because I put it on the side wall. Actually, you need only three, but I will put more because not all of the markers will be visible. So I'll try to scan the size wall here as much as I can on each scan, uh, both the front and the back, so that I have some overlap area for merging. Even though it's a black color, it's, I think I'm not going to use a spray on this one. I'll just uh, scan it directly without a spray. Okay, let's start with the front one. I lace it up a bit with the cube so that I can erase it. Okay, for the resolution, I will choose 0.3. And this about flat bed, I will click on no because there's still a problem when I click yes with the latter. It works fine with the other. Start the scan. I will use a global marker. Okay, during the scan, you can't move anything here on this table. So make sure it's not moving. Okay, I will adjust the brightness of the marker. Start the scan. Okay, I will uh, click on the point cloud and play the scan. Okay, it looks like uh, I need to adjust the brightness of the laser. Uh, for the black color object, I will increase the brightness until it's visible on my preview window. Now I put it to the max. Uh, one thing that I forget to mention is that the Laptop Pro 22 lines laser, uh, the brightness of the laser is uh, dimmer uh, than the Laptop X. 34 lines. So when you scan a dark object, uh, the Laptop X 34 lines can give um, a faster speed because it's brighter. Now I already put this uh, 22 lines Laptop Pro to the maximum brightness um, so that I can scan this uh, black object without spray. Uh, with the Laptop X, uh, the brightness will be 50 or 60 percent. So the Laptop X can adjust uh, a brighter a laser line and for the seven lines the, the brightness is is the same okay and let's start the scanning A 
let's switch to uh, civil lines. Scan. So I will flip to the other side. I need to support it with a play. I will add scan 0.3. Google marker scan. Adjust the brightness to the maximum. Okay, switch to uh, seven lines. I think if I spray it, I can finish this faster. Let's uh, process the product cloud. It's a second scan. We will process with 0 0.3. Okay, it's look uh, green. Let's move to this one. The first scan. Up. I'll merge it using my no merging marker. Scan one, scan two. So I will turn this side. Okay, uh, only one marker is visible. Let's see. Ah, this one is visible. Two. Let's see what else. Okay. Three. What about the other side? The other side, come on. Right, I can see one. And this one here. Okay, I pick this one. Okay, there. I pick uh, this one. Let's try one more. Okay. okay Alright, uh, let's uh, merge it. Okay, it can merge. Click yes. Uh, exit merging. Alright, we have 780,000. Because I'm going to print this one directly, I just need to add some base for it can stand upright in this position. So I will uh, mesh it to uh, 83,000 and close the profiles. Okay, here's the result mesh. Uh, inside look clean. Outside look clean. And maybe I need to repair the holes here. Okay, let's clean it. We export this as the uh, OBJ.
three hours, do you think? Yeah, I stick to the bed very well. Oh, it's still too hot. Easy. Ah, it's very easy. Okay, look at the adhesion. It's very good with the PVP glue. Okay, let's compare this side by side. It's uh, original. This is a uh, 3D print. Injection mode 124 grams, ABS 3D print 69 grams. So the 3D print is half the weight of the injection mode. The wall thickness of this object is about 3 millimeters. It has a bit of flex. I think it has the same level of flex between these two. And the nozzle size is 0.4 mm, so you're not gonna get a sharp edge with the FDM printing. Okay, let's take a look at the printing quality. In the lower part, the wall line is uh, smooth, there's no very curve, just a little bit from the speed of the printing. And when it gets taller, I start to see defects. Because this part is about 27 centimeters tall, and the K1 Max uh, has a maximum height of 30 centimeters, so this is uh, very close to the max volume of the K1 Max. Uh, this part is printed with a support, so the surface is not so smooth, but it's in the, it's in the back when you mount it. When you mount it, it will be, uh, it will be in the back 3 hours of printing. And in the back, it's about the same as in the front. I can see there is a small seam line here. Okay, let's try to put this on. Yes, it looks like it uh, fits perfectly. So if I move it, if you look in there, it's not going to interfere with the suspension. 